Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This confirmation hearing on the appointment, executive appointment of Mr. Francisco G. Santos as a member of the Guam Port Authority of Guam Board of Directors is hereby convened. I would like to say that it is 3 p.m. in the afternoon on Tuesday, February 27, 2017. For information to the community in regards to compliance with the open government law, the initial notification on the confirmation hearing was sent out on Monday the 30th of January and the secondary confirmation, second notice was forwarded out to our stakeholders and to the community on Thursday, February 2nd. I would like to, on that particular note, thank our media partners for their assistance and the support in disseminating information as it applies to this confirmation hearing for Mr. Santos. We do have an extensive list, ladies and gentlemen, and what I will do is, as I call your name, and if, in fact, you wanted to sign in, because one of the things we try to do with my committee is we ensure that everyone who comes to, uh, to attend the public hearing or the confirmation hearing, that they at least sign in to the sign-in roster and signify whether they're in support of any proposal or a nominee, so that, in fact, it's reflected for the record. So. If by any chance I call your name and you will not be providing oral testimony, then please signify and then I'll go ahead and proceed to the other individuals that will be called up. We do have a relatively extensive list of individuals who have signed in, so before I begin with uh, calling up individuals to provide testimony on the executive appointment, I want to highlight that the chief executive had forwarded the, this particular appointment of Mr. Francisco G. Santos to the legislature it was received by the legislative branch on the 12th of January and it was referred to this committee on the 17th of January so that's for information for the community to acknowledge that in fact it has been appropriately referred to this committee as we begin and I start naming individuals to come forward I'd like to thank uh, my good colleague Senator Regine Bisco Lee for joining us this afternoon during this confirmation hearing to begin with individuals, I'd like to invite up to the podium, uh, Mr. Santos, because you are the nominee. I'm going to call you subsequent to. No, Saka Gena. Saka Gena. I'm going to call you sub. And I'm not told you from Adler. Okay? So I'm going to call you subsequent to all of the testimony that will be provided by the general public. If I can invite the following individuals George Havalosa. Senator, are you you're going to be providing testimony? George Havelosa, Simon Pinola, Ken Leon Guerrero. Like I said, if you're not going to be providing oral testimony, please let me know. Uh, Ken Calvo and Senator Joanne Brown. Okay. Okay, so once again, George Havelosa, Simon Pinola, Ken Calvo. Are you all going to be testifying? You all signed in? No? Okay, thank you. Just let me know and, and we'll just go ahead and proceed. Mr. Chris Roberto, I know we have Mr. Ken Leonger up front. Mr. Roberto, will you be joining us? Ms. Doris Bloss. Okay. We're gonna try to make sure we fill up all the chairs before we proceed with the testimony. Mr. Steve Munia. Nina Lumanog. No? Okay. Thank you. Raymond Santos. And, and on that note, folks, I, I understand that you're not going to be providing oral testimony, but thank you for signing in and signifying whether, in fact, you are in support or in opposition of the nominee. Joshua Candeleta. Vince Akfaji. Wakin Pangilinan. We have one more chair up here. Who's the lucky person? Carmelita Nedudo. Annette Mafnes, Paul Santos, Margaret Duenas, Dora Perez, thank you, Evangeline Castro, John Santos, OK, 
Okay, so because uh, Mr. Leonga was initially identified to come forward, uh, Ken, if you can please identify yourself for the record and thank you for submitting your written testimony prior to the hearing. Uh, my name is Ken Leon Guerrero and I am testifying as a taxpayer and a community advocate. And uh, my testimony is against the confirmation for Mr. Santos. The Port of Guam is a valuable publicly owned asset. It is owned by the taxpayers of Guam to serve the people of Guam. The board is supposed to be the eyes and ears of the people in the operation and management of this publicly owned asset. Based on news reports and listening to the testimony last year at the Mr. Santos's confirmation hearing, I am more convinced than ever that the port is in desperate need of a competent leadership on the board. And just to refresh my mind, I went back and reviewed the testimony that was given at the last confirmation hearing, just to make sure that uh, I hadn't forgotten anything. And uh, I believe that the people of Guam will not be well served with reappointment of Mr. Santos to, to the board, let alone to the position of chairman. Last year in his closing statements, he declared very strongly that he is looking after the welfare of the port. Yet in his testimony, time after time, he professed ignorance about many things happening at the port, especially the Guam YTK arbitration process. He professed ignorance about who was sit sitting in the meetings and who was representing the port's interest. Uh, he may be correct in saying that the Guam YTK problem started <laughs> under another board, but the current battle has been under his board. And in, in his testimony, uh, he explained that he lets the legal counsel and the manager make all the legal decisions and report to him after the fact. He was very strong in asserting that the board does not in get involved in making legal decisions. He didn't seem to have a handle on anything happening in day-to-day -day operations of the port, proclaiming that the operation was a management duty, not the board. He stated that the board only makes policy decisions and lets legal counsel and management make decisions and report back to the board. Under questioning from senators, he couldn't bring up a, de a decision that the board had made. Uh, he didn't seem, the fact that he didn't know anything about the union contract issues between the port and the union shows he was totally disconnected from the port at every level. His responses to senators from the, on the panel at the time showed me that he is totally unengaged in his role as chairman of the board and doesn't appear to do anything to protect the public's interest in their ownership of the port. It appears to me that the port has major problems that have not been addressed by the board or management or disclosed to the public. And I say that is because based on the record of management holding back critical financial information from the public auditor during the audit. I have no faith that the management is being truthful or honest with this body any more than they were with the Office of Public Accountability. A big red flag for me is the fact that the port may have major liability issues is the fact that the port spends more than $60,000 a month in legal fees and has done so for the past five years. You would think the chairman would be a little more concerned and a little more knowledgeable what is going on in the port to justify $60,000 a month in legal fees. But based on his testimony last year, he doesn't appear to have a clue about what is happening in the many legal cases before the court. So it appears to me that the board provides no guidance to management or legal counsel. I've attached a listing of all the invoices to this testimony. But the biggest red flag for me is that under his leadership, they're paying an outrageous amount for legal fees compared to the cost of staff in the Attorney General's office. The Attorney General's office pays 29 attorneys, 202,000 a month. The port is paying one attorney, 66,000 a month. And based on the reports I've seen in the press so far on the legal matters facing the port, the taxpayers are not getting their money's worth. The fact that the port management team has acknowledged intentionally withholding critical financial information from the Office of Public Accountability during an audit, I, again, I have no confidence this board or management team can be trusted to manage public assets without more intense oversight and supervision from this body. The port is a vital public asset 
and the level of legal litigation that seems to be taking place at all levels based on billing tells me there is a severe lack of leadership at the board level and that no one is looking out for the ownership. That is the taxpayer's best interest. In my opinion, it will be a breach of your fiduciary responsibility as the people's representatives to confirm Mr. Santos. Thank you very much, Mr. Longo, for your testimony. Mr. Roberto, if you can identify yourself for the record, now only mic put for what? Thank and you and good afternoon, Honorable Thank you, Balago. And again, welcome to the CTBL. We're back to Snodzo. Half a day, honorable members. My name is Christopher Roberto. I come before you to testify in support of Mr. Francisco Santos as a continuing member of the Board of Directors for the Port Authority of Guam. I'll give you a little bit of background on, on, on it. I was raised in the village of Malesu, uh, and now by way of Chalampagu uh, as a proud resident there. Um, with the exception of military stints, I have been a lifelong resident and mariner of our island. As a youth through to today, I share little of this, the title of Salty Dog along with, alongside my elders, my peers, and some of the younger members in our community. Growing up, my family was a poor family, applying our cultural fishing crafts in the waters of Malesso and around the many locations in our ocean to catch fish and make a living. Despite my exemptions as a youth, my grandpa, dad, uncle, and uh, the rest of the families forced me to learn everything they knew about our ocean going and tomorrow traditional fishing methods. This, is, this included ex exposing ourselves to the dangers that came with our livelihood. So yes, I know a little bit about our waters in Guam. I can say most of it though was through subjugation. That was a joke. When I got a little older, I worked as a deck handler and later as a boat captain for the tourist industry down at Cocos. So I know about boat handling and stuff like that and I, and I, I, I aspired to be a harbor master. I knew what the title was. Fast forward to today. Oh, I'm sorry, let me back up. As a police officer, I was with the Harbor Patrol. And so fast forward today, um, I'm still that young 23-year-old police officer, but I just have a few wrinkles that show uh, my age. Um, I, now I serve in the capacity of the assistant port police chief, but more importantly, as the acting harbor master or Guam. So I know a little bit of what Mr. Santos knows. I know how he felt when facing challenges, marine traffic coordination, and tremendous regulatory responsibility for how the goods for the people of Guam arrive and depart safely. My first impressions of Mr. Santos, I first met him back in the 1980s when, when I was a young Marine Patrol officer for the Guam Police Department's Harbor Patrol. I had a chip on my shoulder. I was an invincible cop that protected my island and I was hungry. Depending on the times between calls for marine patrol assistance, I would patrol the waters of Guam to include Upper Harbor. I would conduct foot patrol at the Ganya Boat Basin, as it was called back then, ensuring vagrants stayed away from conducting their mischievous activities. I assisted tourists, I helped the general boating public, and basically I was acting like a marina manager as a policeman. Many times before I knew who he was, I would see Mr. Santos standing at any location at the marina, observing me do my work. I, was, I would come to find out later that he was looking for a subordinate who happened to be the actual marina manager. But he found me instead. Mr. Santos finally broke the <coughs> silence one day and he asked me, Officer Rebetu, can you please stop doing the job of the guy who works for me? I may have to fire him. Needless to say, I almost fired back at him, being the young hungry cop that I was. To have his subordinate come to work then, uh, but. I let that slide because he looked like he could be friends with my father and my uncles. As time went on, Mr. Santos would engage with me about my job, how I liked my being a harbor patrol officer. He would go on to say, all I want from you, to <clears throat> from you is to make sure there's no swimming or fishing occurring in the Aganya Marina, to be kind to the homeless people who sought the sanctuary of the abandoned boats, and to have some compassion for the frequent early morning use of the free water spigot at the boat basin. But I was a young cop who questioned everything especially those who thought were trying to pull the wool over my eyes, who broke the law or took the provisions of the people for granted. Later that day, I questioned my boss, questions like, who the heck is this guy? It was my boss who later told me that he, Mr. Santos, was the harbor master for Guam. Needless to say, I was shocked. 
Inwardly, I bowed my arrogant head in shame, and I was humbled. You see, Mr. Santos had a big job to do back then as a harbor master. He had the responsibility of keeping and abiding by all the regulatory requirements entrusted by the people of Guam to him. He had the regulatory responsibility of reporting to the Coast Guard. He had the responsibility of ensuring all goods aboard any ship that called on Guam as a port came in safely. He had to ensure safety was practiced at port operations, that the stevedores, crane operators, port truckers, forklifts, security, marine traffic con controllers all worked like clogs in a cock. He ensured the, flu the flow of commerce to our community went uninterrupted, that all the goods for the island made it to the community to ensure that everything from needles to thread so our elders could sew a dress, hospitals could get their medicines, or the general public had their chance to buy a car. It all happened. When the offloading of goods were completed and he was satisfied and everything was accounted for, he had the responsibility to ensure that the safe departure of that vessel occurred. He ensured transshipments to the neighboring islands <clears throat> so that they too can get, their, uh, can get resupplied. And it was good. He did it time after time after time. Since my employee at the Port of Guam, I've had opportunities at board meetings to witness his involvement. I, cont I continue to see his commitment. I hear the experience in his voice when he poses questions to leadership. I too am not immune from his inquiries, and I continue to be amazed at how much he has uh, so much institutional knowledge. He is direct, he speaks strongly to ensuring we keep to date with our fiscal responsibilities. He has strong compassion for the employees of the port. He is fair. So in closing, what a dream I live, to make it beyond 32 years of service in law enforcement and now as your acting harbor master, a pipe dream from my youth. It is humbling to experience how the good Lord can cause me to remember small conversations that merged with my dream of being the harbor master that I, that I had a long time ago. I can attest to the positive and long lasting effect I had because of the chats I had with Mr. Santos. I owe Mr. Santos a debt of gratitude for his mentoring, words of diligence, hard work, compassion, as we serve the people of Guam. I assure you, I do not know Mr. Santos personally. I don't even know if we're related. But I can tell you this, that despite the elevated levels of responsibility that he occupied, as I do now as the harbor master, that regulatory administrations press this position into situations of discomfort, but we must always be fair. Mr. Santos has mentored me and I, in his own way, and I am tempered by the years of hardness and sharpened uh, his leading edge. But he does it with compassion and caring for the needs of our island and to the people to which we serve. It is with hope that I've offered you a different perspective on Mr. Francisco Santos and how one man, through his vast institutional op uh, operational knowledge of the port, along with his compassion for the hardworking men and women of the Port Authority, will best serve the people of Guam by allowing Mr. Santos to continue his service as a member of the Board of Directors for the Port, of port Authority of Guam. Sijus Masi. This is Marcy, Mr. Roberto, for your testimony this afternoon. Steve, Mr. Munoz. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Senator Bisco Lee. Um, my name is Stephen Munya, and I am an employee with the Port Authority in the procurement office. Uh, but I sit here before you today as the Vice President of the Port Authority of Guam Goodwill and Morale Association as their Vice President. I have a letter here from our President um, and I'd like to read it off to you. Half a day, Mr. Chairman, committee members. On behalf of the Port Authority of Guam Goodwill and Morale Association, also known as PAGMA, I am providing testimony in favor of the appointment of Francisco G. Santos to serve as a member of the Port Authority of Guam Board of Directors. Mr. Santos has been an avid member of PAGMA Association since its inception back in 1992 through to his retirement in 2010 from the Port Authority. He was known for his participation in PAGMA, PAGMA-sponsored events and activities, devoting his time in promoting the very spirit of what the association stands for, camaraderie and solidarity among port employees. Just recently, 
having served as chairman of the Port Authority Board for the past three years. Mr. Santos continues to provide support to the association, making it possible for the association to move forward with its efforts in coordinating functions for port employees' enjoyment. Additionally, some of us may not know, Mr. Santos also takes the time to visit the port employees. He would walk the halls of the Port Administration Building, stop by every division, and personally say hi. How are you? Have a great day. Or just to wish a holiday greeting. A simple gesture, so simple yet profound. <clears throat> it is with the support and act of kindness that Mr. Santos exemplifies to the Port employees that PAGMA Association supports his appointment to serve as a member of the Port Authority of Guam Board of Directors and request your favorable confirmation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Munia, and thank uh, the President, Mr. Santos, for his written testimony. John Santos. Mr. Chairman, I do have a written testimony, but I'd like to read it. I'd like to put a face to the name that's there, Senator. My name is John Santos. I'm the operations manager of the Port Authority of Guam. I've been with the port for over 30, 31 years and have known Mr. Santos for a very long time. He retired at the port as the harbor master, providing public service for 36 years. During his time as a harbor master, Mr. Santos and I worked hand in hand in the planning, the navigation of cargo and passenger vessels, ensuring our safety when calling Port of Guam and guiding her safely onto the port docks. To the years that I've been in operations and all in operations, the port has been through a lot. We had a team, Frank was always, Mr. Santos has been always part of that team, being harbor master. We had the great earthquake, we had numerous typhoons, we had the fires, or what have you, and Frank played a key role as harbor master uh, when we went through these events, ensuring that the vessels are able to come in safely and were able to move cargo. So Frank has been always in, in operations through the years. He's been with us at the port. He has the knowledge and he has the teamwork. Not too, not too long ago, Mr. Santos served as chairman of the Port of Board of Directors. During his time of the board, Mr. Santos always made it a point to follow through in ensuring port employees, <coughs> excuse me, in operation, operations work well equipped with the necessary tools and equipment needed. This is done knowing the ins and outs of vessel operations and his understanding of the demands and level of activity involved in the movement of cargo and what the employees go through. With that said, just reading that, operations, and I have my superintendents uh, behind me who are in support of operations and support of Mr. Santos, because we have new equipment. It shows where the money is actually going. Investment back into our operations to ensure that we move the cargo efficiently and safely. You're talking about brand new tractors, 16, you're talking about four top picks. You're talking about forklifts that are all coming in, about sweepers, and much more equipment that's much needed in operations. Mr. Santos, with his, with his team, at the time when he was chairman, has always supported operations. He has also questioned me to ensure the safety of our employees. Mr. Santos is well-versed with the maritime industry and possesses institutional knowledge of the Port Authority of Guam. With that, that just said, if you're talking about the harbor rules, he's the man to go to. If you're talking about dealing with the captain of the port, he's a guy to talk to. He knows the rules. He's been there. I am currently um, was the president for the Atasca, and he has always been a, um, a member and a full, uh, gives our associate of the, the uh, full support. But the Port Authority of Guam is also a member of Atasca, the associate terminal shipping companies, Stephen Lawrence Shipping Companies of Micronesia. It's over 50 some years old. It's the oldest, one of the oldest nonprofit organizations. You're talking about ports and stevedore and companies uh, through FSM, Madro, Palau, and the CNMI. Mr. Santos has traveled with me, and most recently to every of, of our conventions. And when we go together, a lot of the members who are there turn to him for his advice also. Your consideration in closing, Senator, and his confirmation to serve as a, a member once again on our Port Authority Board of Directors would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Santos, for your testimony.
Gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and proceed with the additional individuals who have signed up. So thank you again for your testimony. If I can invite the following individuals, and please signify if, in fact, you're, you will not be presenting our testimony. I do have Arden Bonito. Thank you. Carol Jenkins. Sean Cepeda. Joss. Joe A. Someone help me out here? Okay. Thank you, sir. Joanne Conway. Oscar Cabo. Please grab a seat if, in fact, you're going to be providing testimony. Maria Titano. Betty Ann Wustick, Paris. Simon De Los Santos, Simeon. Harold Cruz. Harold Cruz, no longer in the audience. Doris Ogden. Sorry. Aguero. <laughs> Doris Aguero? <laughs> Doris? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Doris. Okay, if I can invite uh, then Senator John Brown to join us up front. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anyone else that would like to provide testimony and who have not signed in yet, please do so by visiting one of my team members. If not, this would be the last panel, Mr. Oscar, and then also send Joanne Brown. Frank, have you signed up? I didn't see Frank Jr. Ah. Okay, so aside from the, these individuals, then the nominee will be brought up, unless you signify and you inform one of my team members, okay? Please, thank you very much. And gentlemen, I apologize, it's a senatorial co-colleague discretion, so Senator Joanne Brown, you can proceed initially. Okay. Okay, Oscar. Buenas and offer a senator. No, if you know some more, did they pay for English at all? Okay. No, but to Paguna on in a baby support this, Mr. Santos, Ginigi, Pamana, Holland, Talu, Tati, Ginigi, Gi board. The armament the tempo and him and he go bet no a fish no baby sound or give board or give commercial port. No. Kalan gitu tuan, kalan ti nunggu mak nyo satu kes tunggu perbatku. Lo animato gigi port nu gigi natano gisi Mr Santos Tordo i nau nemo na uripara si natauto na you know like what Mr Santos learned earlier and the other speakers said na anadi mas tunggu put put itu papa i port from the harbour master area to the to the gantry, whatever, todo na lugar siya, giza mas tumungo. Lo uno na punto magat is tigi siya bi sangan po si Mr. Santos na ang man mort, ang man meeting ang ni board, to tempo magat asasangan mas i-implaw dahil na tinsapot ti i-implaw ang manano mo na man manggago pa from mga parts, whatever, ang nasuguro ko, eno ang insita. Sa atigay mas, ang nasuguro na I perform mana i to di implau ni ni dinansi ni ni pemain sogi cecut per taza ni si poro nampak alat tin taza tu snap for that matter. So si Mr Santos di rantin i mami na dos kini gi gi board no u atan istina tauto za i i tiningot na bulat tiningot na puri puri batku puri commercial port fanan cintai nabi honest di macam tu kini gi port sanya i militer. Pues y as pon anatan y zona qualification, you know, más que chumilun que ni afa pon atan. Pues to get back in English now, you know, I'm in support for Mr. Santos, and for one of the reasons why I really support this man because I've seen this man work down there as the chairman, and on top of that, we I seen him always emphasize about the employees, make sure that the employees are taken care of when we have a board meeting and where the chairman himself or the director or other, you would always emphasize to, to, to the uh, director 
or to the other employees, is that all you need? Because, you know, he wants to make sure that we have the, the proper equipment and tools. As you know, for years, the port has been uh, forgotten in many years. Just recently, about maybe a couple of weeks ago, uh, you were there, Senator Ogden. What we accomplished with to his leadership on doing all the equipment. Over, we spent over $500 million of equipment and still more to come. But he wanted to make sure that that legacy part of the port is well done. And we expanded the port and also and, and other issues that we, you know, is there more to do? Yes. But, but I think the, the most important part of this is the is that we have come to together with the employees and working with the team and the employees. When I first got on board, one of the things I did was I went around to and in the entire board. I wanted to feel the employee's position on what he was, and I did not receive any negative on him, believe it or not, you know. And everybody said, you know, he, all, all they said was, just get us the tools, man. We need this, we need this, we need this. And... Um, you know, and to that leadership, I sentiment that to Joanne and with, and with the board itself, we came through with, with a flying color with the support of Mr. Uh, Mr. Santos. So I ask of you senators to really uh, think about and, and renominate him back because, you know, right now there's only three of us and it's really hard for us to, as board, when one is gone, we, we, uh, we can't have a quorum. So I, I beg of you guys to, to really uh, put him back into the port because he is, he is a great asset to the people of Guam. Um, and I think it's, it's warranted that we put him back. And like I said, he's always been a strong advocate for the employees. That I can say honestly. Uh, he was, you know, he's always thinking about the employees, whether it be health, whatever, sa security or safety. He's always thinking about that. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Calvo, for your testimony this afternoon. Mr. Santos, I apologize. I thought that was your dad's. Uh signature on the signing roster and you were one of the first few individuals <laughs> so uh, anyways um, um i'm frank santos um they call me junior at the port um because at one point in time he was working there i wasn't really prepared to come up here to say anything um but then i thought hey what the heck come on it's extra points but um <laughs> i've been working at the port for 31 years and i started as a stevedore I think my testimony, what I'm going to say is about him as a dad, um, than to say as a, um, a co-worker or a colleague because um, I didn't know anything about the port when I first started as a steward. I stayed in Stevedore for two years, and I would see my dad when he was a harbor master, always stay late, 24 hours if there's a storm, he'll, he'll take the night watch. I'd see him on the phone telling the employees, okay, I'll, I'll cover this shift. So as a child, I'd see him, his dedication to the port. So what I'm trying to say is that I even asked him after he retired, why would you want to go back to the port? It's time for you to retire. But because the port is like family to him, he decided that you know the rest of his life he's going to end it with the port. And he's 82 now. And I'm not saying that, oh, please give it to him because his days are counted. <laughs> but you know, you give someone what they love to do, and they're good at, and you know, as a child, I'd see him always go to work, and I guess I do get those lectures in the morning too, I'm like, you know, look at me, when I was working at the port, I stayed all the way to here, and stuff like that, so growing up, he was almost actually an idol of going to work, because I wouldn't have lasted at the port for 31 years if it wasn't because of that. And then I can say in the employee side, being an employee, um, I've seen a lot of changes at the port, um, even through the other leaderships of the board, and what it needs is they have to have a very good working relationship with the legislature and stuff for it in order for it to happen. I mean, I know in the media there's all these bickering and stuff, but I think um, at the end of the day, when we all work together, things will get done. Instead of getting all this negativity, of, oh, they're not doing this, they're not doing that. But I've seen the port in 31 years that I've been there. I've seen it grown. I've seen it changed. Um, and I'm just asking the body if they can give him another term to serve as a chairman of the port. And that's it, folks. <laughs> Senator. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, I, I just want to emphasize something uh, earlier in one of the statements that um, on the audit part of the, you know, of the port, and the audit report came, you know, which have been clean for, for the last four years, right? Yeah. 
So, you know, that, that shows the leadership of Mr. Santos that we had a very clean audit. In fact, there's only two agencies that I know with the audit report coming out that we have a clear audit in all. In, and I wanted to emphasize that a lot because that, that shows the leadership also of, of the, the port and also with the director and the leadership of the chairman himself. So I wanted to make sure that that, you know, is clarified very well that, you know, uh, that the um, board itself, you know, is in good, con in good condition, in good health. Thank you, Mr. Cabo, and thank you again, Mr. Santos, for your testimony. Senator? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and certainly appreciate the uh, fact that you really moved very quickly to uh, have this hearing and hold this hearing, understanding the current situation of our board with the minimum of three board members. I do want to say from the onset, uh, because we were very, and I do want to put this for the record, highly, highly disappointed last year um, when our chairman was renominated by the governor. Uh, and we were here, what, almost seven, eight months ago for his confirmation hearing. And the response the port got to that particular hearing was absolutely nothing. And I know that does not apply to you, and certainly we are very, very pleased with your appointment by your colleagues to serve as the oversight chair for the Port of Guam. Uh, I am now beginning, I'm sort of pretty junior because uh, Frank Jr. here is at 31 years. I'm just beginning my, my fifth year now as the general manager of the port. Uh, and prior to that, certainly I had uh, Chairman Dan Tidinko, and now for the last three years I, I've had Chairman Frank Santos. And I think with all the effort, and it's not just by us in the leadership on the board or by our chairman, or certainly not by myself or our deputies uh, with Mr. Pangolinan and certainly uh, um, with Mr. Al Duenas, who serves in the admin and finance side. I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's the people that are here uh, that make the port the success story that it's been. And I, I, would, I would go to bet uh, with any GovGuam agency, and I'm sure there are a few good ones out there that have been working very diligently and we hear their success stories. The Port of Guam is right up there. I think if you look at where we were a few years ago, where we are now, uh, and certainly Chairman Santos having started back in 1974, I was in the third grade. You were in the second grade. I know because I'm a year older than you. Um, but when you think about that and how long he has worked at the Port of Guam, and collectively up to now we're talking 43 years collectively, uh, prior to that, he served in the Navy for 20 years, and I have some fondness with that because he's the retired chief boatswain's mate, CPO, just like my late father. And so I certainly have uh, familiarity growing up in that environment of what was involved in that as a military career. Uh, and I don't think there's anyone else here, probably on island, that has his credentials. And we were very saddened when the response from the previous legislature, at least the oversight committee, was no response. And I think at the end of the day, when members of our community volunteer to serve, and they do, I mean, they do a tremendous scrutiny, of course, and, and understandable, because you're taking on a public responsibility, and in this case, to oversee a very critical infrastructure in our community. So certainly, you want to ensure that the people that you entrust, that have the advice and consent of the legislature, are going to do good for the Port of Guam, as you would expect of any other Gov Guam department and agency. The fact that our people are here today is to really demonstrate something that maybe some of your colleagues, unfortunately, don't recognize, because um, some of your colleagues in particular like to take things very personally. And while at the end of the day we may have our personal thoughts and opinions about things or each other, we have our public responsibilities that we have assumed and that in some cases we've been elected to or in other cases we've been appointed to, to fulfill. And I don't think we should ever lose sight of that mission. And while he was treated very badly by the previous committee, uh, disrespectfully, I want to relay that that disrespect did not end with him. It was extended to all of us. And I think we're deserving of, we're deserving of more than that. Well, Senator, I, I certainly appreciate the, uh, the brief history that you're providing the committee, but because that individual is not with us, uh, he's presently off island. No, I understand, uh, I and like I, I, I'm perfectly clear of that, and that's why I mentioned I'm stating this for the record. Okay. Because I, I think it needs to be. I mean, we, we have patiently and quietly gone about what we've needed to do over the years without the support from the legislature. And I don't mean that specifically to you, certainly, Senator, because in the short time you've been our oversight chair, uh, you've come and visited the port. We've had a number of meetings with you to dialogue on our current issues and operations and what we will do moving forward. Uh, but I think for us to let go of the past, it's, it's important for us also to, to relay what those issues are so it's understood and, it's, it's and made only, aware. It's only because the, 
that individual is not here to be. I know, but I'm sure he'll look at the record knowing how he is, so I'm sure it'll get to him. Um, but, but I think it's important to acknowledge that because the, the response we got was silence. And I think at the end of the day, the Port of Guam is deserving of more than that. And I don't doubt that with your leadership and the support, certainly of your committee, uh, that we will have very good dialogue, that we will continue to move forward with the things we need to do. Uh, but unfortunately, I think we just need to acknowledge those issues. Um, the most the Port of Guam has received from the Guam legislature's sovereign immunity language almost four years ago when we entered into a $10 million loan with the Bank of Guam to address our service life extension projects, uh, upgrades to our computer system, and also uh, fortunately out of that, close to $2 million was invested in the procurement of four of our top lifters, which cost about half a million dollars apiece. Uh, and so uh, there are issues that we have, and I'm sure as time goes on, we'll be dialoguing with you and legislation that we'll need, and we're very optimistic that we will get that support. Uh, one of the things I do want to state, because there, there have been misrepresentations uh, that have been relayed about the capability and competency of Mr. Santos. Uh, I think you've seen and heard from individuals that have known him for certainly many, many, many more years than I about what those capabilities and competencies are. Uh, some have wanted to paint it up that he's unaware of the issues or somehow there's a select few at the port that are running the port without direction or leadership. I don't think anything could be more from the truth. I mean, our, our meetings are publicly noted. Uh, you uh, actually attended one of our most recent board meetings that we had in January. Uh, it's recorded for the record, the actions and decisions that are made by our board. Uh, so at the end of the day, I think it's unfortunate there are some misinformed individuals. There are some that have conspiracy theories that they want to live in uh, and, and try to create their own realities about what they think is going on. Uh, but at the end of the day, for those of us in management and our management team, I mean, we have to rely on the direction of our board because at the end of the day, they set policy and they set a very important role uh, within, our, within our operations. And at the end of the day, I do work for them. I take their direction, what they provide. We can advise at the end of the day of what we know, but of course, ultimately, that decision is theirs. And what a tremendous disservice, I mean, for someone who's invested so much of his time. And I actually asked him when he was first nominated, I said, no, Mr. Chair, you're at the airport. Um, why would you want to come to the Port Authority? You know, they got china and silverware and glasses, uh, you know, they have glasses, up, you know, glass up there. I mean, we're, we're paper cups and paper plates and plastic spoons. Uh, and he said, you know, I, I just, my heart has always been here. When the governor appointed me to go to the airport, of course, you know, I, I went and I served at the airport, but I've always wanted to come back to the Port of Guam. And I think that says a lot. I don't think any of us will ever have that many years to invest that he has invested. And I think in the very short time, and certainly with his predecessor, Dan Tidinko, and the direction he set with his board, and certainly what uh, Chairman Santos has done, uh, it's been unprecedented growth. I mean, the growth that has happened at the Port of Guam, there's nothing comparable to it since the facility was built almost 50 years ago. I mean, we've gone from pencil and paper to the latest technology, the latest security capabilities. Uh, the equipment that we have is only the beginning of what's yet to come. We've worked to improve every work location in our yard for our employees. We're looking at working through after the PUC addresses, hopefully in a fa favorably our tariff, to actually build a new administration building. Uh, those things a few years ago would be unheard of, unthought of, and yet they are very possible and something that we can very much accomplish in, in the near term. And a lot of that has to do with the vision and direction that our board has provided. Uh, even the areas in the port, and I know exactly where they are, that we still have yet to address renovations to will be done in the near future. So that by the time certainly our management team leaves the Port of Guam, uh, every upgrade will be made to improve the work environment, the training, the equipment, the capabilities, the compensation to our employees. Um, all of this is only possible through the support that we get from our board. So we are here before you again, and I know Senator Uggen, having worked with you, uh, I'm fairly optimistic. We will get an answer from your committee, and we certainly hope that it is a favorable answer. And at the end of the day, um, we appreciate, and I do want to thank our, our board chairman, uh, Frank Santos for his continued desire to do what he does. I only hope that when I, if I, I always say if, I don't know, if I were fortunate enough to, to reach his age in life to have as much capability and interest and energy uh, that he has, because sometimes I don't have it now, trying to keep up with him. And I, I think there's a lot to be said for that. And it's very admirable uh, that he still wants to come back in spite of everything. 
uh, that he's had to deal with, uh, come back and, and support the people at the Port of Guam and all of our employees that are here who also are here to support him. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Brown, for your testimony. And <coughs> folks, thank you. I appreciate it. At this time, uh, I understand there's two additional individuals that have signed in, Alex Aflagui and Peter Aflagui. Are you interested in providing oral testimony? If not, we're going to go ahead and call the nominee, Mr. Francisco G. Santos. Please grab a seat, identify yourself for the record, and, and if you have any comments you would like to share on the, your nomination, you can begin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. It is uh, an honor and privilege to come before you in this confirmation. And also, I want to thank the governor for reappointing me once again to serve as one of the board members for the Port Authority of Guam. And also, I want to thank those who give their testimony for me this uh, afternoon, those for me and those who are against me. I appreciate for the time and effort to be here this afternoon. But first of all, I want to continue to offer my service to the people of Guam. But first of all, I want to let you know that I retired in the Navy for 20 years. I retired as a chief bosun mate. You know, to make a chief bosun mate during my time is very, very hard. I'll guarantee you that. Only few can make it. During my 20 years in the Navy, I served in the different type of ship. My first ship in the Navy was a troop transport. We carry Marines put him on the boat, and send him to the beach. Also, our station on USS Mobile is a cargo ship. We carry cargo for the Marine and also equipment for the Marines. I serve on an oil tanker. The mission is to replenish different ships at sea, day and night. And I supervise a lot of my seamen for that operation. I serve on the ammunition ship. Again, we replenish ship at sea, especially during Vietnam War. We put a lot of ammo, giving it to the carrier during that time. I was stationed here also on a seagoing tugboat. We tow barge from Guam, Saipan, Chishajima, Palau, and other places. And I was stationed at the SRF on the floating dry dock, the AFDM-8, for two years. We dock and undock. So I'm very familiar at the SRF. I could tell you the depth of the water. And also I put the cargo handling battalion two in service. We train people how to handle cargo. In 1963, I was assigned in Vietnam, Saigon, before the outbreak of the war. I was an advisor. The Navy sent me there to train Vietnamese people how to handle ships operation. Then after that, so many things again, I was uh, security, base security, home forces police, and many things that I did in the Navy for 20 years. Ships handling, I was a harbor pilot, and many other things that I did in the Navy. My 20 years, and I'm very proud, and I want to thank the Navy for giving me that leadership and the training and the knowledge. And I'm using that knowledge and training at the port. In the port, I worked for the port for 39 years. I started with the longshoreman specialist. I was hired for the harbor master, but the position is not there yet. So the general manager put me down at the operation, longshoreman specialist. I was a safety administrator for the port. I was acting chief security for the port. I was also acting operation manager for the port. I was acting assistant general manager for the port for two years and six months as acting general manager for the port and three years 
as a chairman for the Port of Authority. Mr. Chairman and Senator Lee, if anyone can match this qualification of mine, please stand up. And I want to continue to work and serve the port and the people of Guam. I'm paying back what the port has done for me. For 36 years, the port put food on the table. I raised my children because of the port. Now I'm returning that blessings that the port has given to me. And I want to pay back the port, what the port has done for me. And I want to continue to offer my service, not only to the port, but to the people of Guam. So give me again the opportunity, you know, to serve the people of Guam and to take care of the port and also the employee. No one of us is perfect. All of us have limitation, Mr. Speaker. I do not know finance or any other things in the port because if I need something, I will go to that person that know that department or division. I don't have to be an accountant. I don't go to school. But if I need something about the finance, I got people to give me that information. Just like you, Senator, and Senator Lee. Sometimes you have to ask your staff for information because you don't know everything. So what I'm asking you, Mr. Chairman and Senator Lee, please, I am humbly asking you, give me the opportunity. And also I'm very proud that I am the first non-Filipino to be ordained bishop at Iglesia Ni Cristo. You know, the people of Guam should be proud of this. Imagine one of the fast and growing religion in the world, the Iglesia Ni Cristo. I was ordained in 2015, the first non-Filipino. And to, I was giving that knowledge by the man up above to know how to address and to talk to people, to counsel them, to give them words of encouragement, not to destroy them, but be positive. Many people nowadays, all they do is looking at the negative of a person. Even if the person has done 99% good, but that 1%, you will go to that 1%. That kind of attitude should be changed. But please, again, Mr. Chairman and Senator Lee, with your committee, I am very humbled to be here this afternoon. And please give me again the opportunity. As long as God give me the strength and the good health, I want to continue to serve the poor and the people of Guam. Not to benefit myself. I don't have no business down there at the port. But I want to take care also our employees. Like I always say, the employees is a great asset. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Santos, for your testimony this afternoon. And, and I want to first of all start off by also thanking the governor for appointing you and we're nominating you to serve on the board again of the Port Authority of Guam. You know, when, when I look at uh, individuals who are going to be entrusted with major responsibilities such as serving on the board of any agency, any autonomous agency, or serving in a voluntary capacity. Certainly what you have just alluded to, you shared with us your 20 years of military service, and then you retired your 34, 36 years of service in the Port Authority of Guam, knowing and understanding and also listening to your employees, or the employees within the Port Authority of Guam, and understanding that they also want you to continue to serve in that this particular capacity and then listening to your former board members coming in and sharing the perspective that you brought for three years having served in the Port Authority of Guam board and then finally from one of my former colleagues <coughs> Senator Brown alluding to some of the accomplishments under your leadership and the leadership of the entire board I think it speaks volumes it certainly speaks volumes 
regardless, and this is where I was going with my statement, Senator Brown, regardless as to what has tra transpired in the past, as chair, my commitment is to ensure that this nomination gets to the floor. If any member of the, of the body would like to refrain or not support your nomination, then that's where that discretion should be provided because each 15 members of this body were rightfully elected by the people of Guam. But for me to even, or for anyone to even look at me and say, you know, as chair, he may hold it in the committee, that's not my job. That's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to help facilitate this nomination, knowing full well that there are three hardworking board members right now, and providing an additional compliment is only gonna support the perspective that the board has and their ability to be able to provide a varied perspective in, in terms of supporting the general manager. That is where my responsibility is. So Mr. Santos, you have my commitment that I will push this nomination to the floor and then whoever is gonna vote, and you know where my perspective is, having served in the military, Mr. Santos, and you not only alluded to that, but also the religious component and perspective that you bring to the table. So just seeing the support that you have from the Port Authority family, the leadership, and your fellow board members that you have served alongside it's enough for me to extend my support to your nomination. There are some issues, though, that continue to affect the port. And this is where Senator Brown and, and myself as chair, we've had the opportunity to be able to sit down and discuss some of these issues. And we've also had the opportunity, or I've had the opportunity to tour the Port Authority of Guam facilities. And the biggest issue, and you know it's at the forefront, and the, the existing board members made a decision to proceed with that particular judicial process. But that is at the forefront, and I committed as chair to have an oversight hearing on that particular uh, aspect of the Port Authority. Because it's already proceeding in a particular fashion, there's no need to ask you additional questions other than when we have the oversight hearing, the uh, general manager, Senator Brown, as well as perhaps yourself or other board members will be able to share as much as you can with the public. My intent is to ensure that the people of Guam understand how and what, what brought us to where we are today and how we can prevent it from ever happening again where the people of Guam may be placed with a major <coughs> financial obligation and trying to prevent that from happening again is one of the perspectives that I've shared with Senator Brown in terms of moving forward. But Mr. Santos, you have definitely provided your service to our island and to our community. There continues to be con concerns out there. You heard from one of the individuals, and he has every right to be able to share his perspective and his, his concern. I think that if you look at the, the support that has been extended to you by the Port Authority family, as well as the management and leadership, certainly it speaks volumes in terms of, of the direction of your nomination. So I thank you for offering yourself to serve again, to continue your service on the Port Authority of Guam, and. I look forward to your nomination being placed on the floor and then floor and then finally acting on your nomination. So I'll leave it at that. Um, aside from asking questions, you've been away from the board for about a good three months, four months? Well, we have a consistent okay. You've been away from the board for, yeah. for a few months and for me to ask you uh, direct questions now other than, than some of the, the pertinent questions I think would be, would not be appropriate. So I'll leave it at that unless you, you want to add any comments to issues that have been brought up in the past? I just want to thank you for your trust and confidence. Thank you, Mr. Santos. <coughs> Senator Lilly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Santos, thank you so much for your service to our island and also your service to our country. And thank you for expounding on some of the work that you did in the Navy that um, is special to me. My, my father was a serviceman and he um, retired in the U.S. Navy. My husband also served in the Marine Corps, so thank you for helping to supply some of those folks um, during your time, your time there. I also wanted to thank the individuals who have provided testimony and so many of the folks that came out spoke um, about your vast institutional knowledge, how you're engaged with the employees, which I think is extremely important. Um, also, your attention to the operational capacity at the port. Um, safety and security was a, a big thing that continued to come up, as well as ensuring the equipment and the tools were there for folks to get the job done. 
that they needed to. So thank you for that. Um, I did have one question about um, the master plan update um, that was done in 2013. I just wanted to, to ask you about some of the, um, I have the executive summary with me and I just wanted to know, I know you've been away for, for a few months, but if you have any, um, if you'd like to speak to any of the, the things that were going on with the master plan and where we are with this situation and what you hope to bring to the table as, as you continue your service with the port. You know, the master plans that we just completed, the modernization of the port, we could see it now. We put $50 million that were provided by the Department of Transportation. We modernized the port. And we should be proud of our port because our port now has become one of the world class port here in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. But we have so many projects ahead of us. But the only thing is lacking there is our funding. <coughs> Once we get some of our funding, then we will continue <coughs> the port to grow and progress. Because we know that in the future, uh, new technology will be coming in. So we have to take a look. We have to take a look about passenger terminal for our passenger ship that's coming in. We all know that passenger ship does not mingle together with operation. Yeah. It's costing us a lot of money now. Every time, like today, we have a passenger ship. We pay a lot of overtime for our port security to arrange to make the requirement regarding the safety. So we have so many things ahead of us for the port. And I remember what the late Governor Bodalio mentioned to me in the 70s. He said, Frank, don't look up at Tumum. Look down at the port, Cabras. This is where his build-up will occur, down at Cabras. And I believe him. See? There's so many things down in Cabras, not only for tourism, but so many things again. So we have many projects ahead of us. As long as we have funded, funding, then we'll continue. Build new administration building. Of course we need that. And many other things. So do we need any dredging? Then we have to do that. Um, some of the people who spoke in favor um, of your confirmation also alluded to your experience in, in safety. Mm -hmm. And I know in July, the port um, reported a number of safety lapses by heavy equipment operators that have cost the port thousands of dollars. So I just wanted to ask you, um, should you be confirmed, what measures are you looking forward to putting in place to make sure that safety violations um, don't, don't occur? I inform all the management at least five to ten minutes before the operation occurred down at the port. Give them a safety lecture. See? Remind those operators, do you check the equipment? Do you check the oil, tires, and all those things? And you have been alert. And always inform the employees, remember, they say, take care of the equipment. Because the equipment is the one paying your salary. Once you damage that equipment, what will happen to you? you see? So we are really concerned of the safety of the port and also our port employees. Of course, accident cannot avoid, you know, accident can happen any time. But we're trying to avoid it, minimize the accident. Imagine down at the port at night, 2 o'clock in the morning, you could see all those tractors and chassis moving at the port. As human, just like our body is really not, God does not create our body to be working at two o'clock in the morning. Our body is supposed to be sleeping at two o'clock in the morning, but our port employees are down there working. So we are concerned of the safety. Thank you so much, Mr. Santos, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Lee. Mr. Santos, thank you again for uh, extending yourself to the community and okay, uh, supporting the governor's nomination of your appointment to serve on the board. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Brown, for all you and the board members have, and the employees have been able to do over the course of the past several years. The modernization of the equipment, okay. that was a, a very pleasant sight to see that, in fact, now our Port Authority 
uh, employees who use the heavy yeah. equipment are equipped with newer equipment so that they can carry out their responsibilities. We know that anywhere from 85 to 90 percent of all of our goods and commodities come through the Port Authority. So the, the service and the work that all of the employees certainly is very supportive of that and, and they've done an incredible job. We understand the with the oversight, uh, Mr. Santos will be able to get some additional information with regards okay. to the master plan because I know that Senator Lee had asked about that. Uh, there will be a presentation on that and also some of the ongoing litigation. So I'll leave that for okay. that particular discussion. But to all the employees and to the management, Senator Brown, to the board members, and Mr. Santos, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. There being no other individuals to provide testimony, this confirmation hearing. On I the want to lastly, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I just Once want again. to invite Senator Lee, please visit us down at the port. We'll give you a tour. I believe my manager will give you a ride on the uh, golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Right. Santos. <laughs> this concludes the, the confirmation hearing on Mr. Francisco G. Santos. The committee will continue to receive testimony for the next 10 days, and then the confirmation hearing documents and reports will be completed shortly thereafter. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day.